everyone it's kendall here if you're new around here welcome if you're not new around here what is up home skillet biscuit bang bang sorry i missed you guys on tuesday it's because this week has been a hot mess in every way your girl technically already moved he's a a town i'm from detroit i don't know why i did that with that said you're probably not gonna see my apartment for a hot minute because <laughs> i'm still gonna be filming here for a while because i gotta have furniture that's probably a big part of things so until like furniture and things are kind of settled over there you're still gonna see this wonderful beautifulness if you start to notice that things slowly are dwindling away like there's less stuff right here now you know what it's saturday happy saturday which means it's bad movies and a beat day the series on my channel where i talk about bad movies while doing my makeup last week we did a little bit of self-reflection looking back on bad choices we made when we all look back at twilight which um i gotta say if i had to like qualify any bad movies in a beat that i've done thus far that's my favorite it would be last week's it was it was fun it was a fun time this week however we're gonna be looking at another cult classic film this wasn't on purpose but i feel like for some reason i'm inadvertently doing like a cult classic and then like a very popular movie then a cult classic then a popular movie um that's not on purpose it's just how it's been how it's been going recently holy crap that's full coverage oh god this week we are diving in breen territory for those of you that are really into cult classic bad movies, I know you're probably wetting your pants right now. We're into Breen land, Breenville, Breen country. We're looking at Neil Breen. <laughs> Most specifically, we are looking at Neil Breen's fine work that is Fateful Findings. Ah yes, Neil Breen. Actor, director, editor, production designer, production manager, casting director, cyber alien Jesus? Question mark? <laughs> An overall ultimate moral compass that is Neil Breen. Neil Breen is a multi filmmaker, and Fateful Findings is his third feature length film. If I'm not mistaken, in total, he's had like five or six. And the film is described as a paranormal thriller where a computer hacker exposes worldwide secrets. Now the first time I had ever heard of this film was actually while watching a review by Curtis Connor. If you do not watch Curtis Connor, I highly recommend him. If you like corny humor, he's he's just an endless supply, my guy. This movie made me laugh so hard. So hard that it was alarming to myself and those around me. Like I I don't think I don't think you comprehend, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. When I tell you I laughed so hard that I could not breathe. I laughed so hard that my gasps sound like schoolgirl hentai. I laughed so hard that I had them like giant <laughs> giant fat tears like rimming my eyes like a chibi character. I was reborn into a new human breed. <laughs> that was corny. Like I was laughing so hard that I think my mom was concerned whether or not I would survive until the end of the movie. She was like, if it's that serious, don't watch it. <laughs> but lucky for you and lucky for me and lucky for we, I did. And I now have the pleasure of introducing this masterpiece for those of you that have never heard of it. You're welcome. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a magical day. <laughs> now, if you've seen my The Room and Birdemic reviews, then you may have noticed that these It's So Bad It's Good type movies tend to follow a very formulaic pattern of sequences and, and ways to establish how awkward the movie is, honestly. Passionate but delusional creator, check. Long, drawn out, uncomfortable pauses. Look, Leah, a mushroom. Check. Awkward human simulator acting mechanics. <laughs> Inappropriate responses to somewhat sensitive information. My job sucks. I've got to get this work done. Also check. Superfluous supporting characters and nonsensical overall storyline? Check and check. We're good. We have all, we got it. But this movie is so bad that it makes it feel like the first time. Our main protagonist is Dylan, of course, played by Neil Breen. And the film begins with Dylan and Leah, who are both children and are both like frolicking through a forest or something. And. <laughs> They discover a mushroom that turns into a buried treasure. 
<laughs> and inside are like a rock and some like little beads or something. To commemorate this day, the girl Leah decides to write down, it's a magical day. Soon thereafter, Leah's family moves away. Where's Dylan? I don't know how he did it, but somehow he made a scene of people waving somehow so inhuman and unnatural looking. Fast forward and Dylan is an adult, which is what tends to happen if you were a child in time progressed. And Dylan has a pretty decent life. He's uh, a writer, he's a novelist. He has a really great, attractive, semi-emotive wife. Hi until one day while quote unquote talking to his wife i don't <laughs> are you on your way home okay great while talking to his wife and getting off of a curb he was alone at and then suddenly there was eight billion people this entire movie is a spot the stupid game honestly you could sit there and do a drinking game and just sit there and get wasted off of all of the continuity issues in this movie but i some of them i actually want to keep to myself so that it doesn't ruin the experience for you. Have fun. Anywho, Dylan gets hit by a car. <laughs> Why he Zoolandered a car like that? That was funny. Dylan is in pretty bad shape after getting hit by a car, so he's taken to the hospital, which is most definitely not just someone's apartment. What you mean you've never seen a hospital with blinds and carpet? <laughs> Ew, all the bacteria in there, everybody did. After harnessing some power from that there rock, Dylan is able to get himself out of the hospital using his freakishly beautiful hands. Those are the prettiest hands I've ever seen on anyone, let alone a man. Dylan is able to release himself from the bed after pulling out his oxygen mask, which was not plugged into anywhere to give him oxygen. How is he alive? My guy's entire mouth and nose were covered, but that oxygen machine. Dylan goes back home and he takes a shower and oh my god he's just bleeding profusely if you're bleeding that much why did you leave I know you believe in the power of the magic rock but I think it only gave you half a glass there so yeah he's in the shower his wife is like what are you doing here aren't you supposed to be in the hospital and then they do this like weird in the shower slow dance super weirdly intimate slow dance thing in the shower it was disturbing <laughs> like now, okay, for those of you that have seen this movie, you may have noticed or may have become aware of a running meme of sorts that goes through the entire movie. And that is uh, Neil Breen's apparent distaste for these four laptops. Basically any scene that involves these laptops in the room, they're gonna get abused in some way or another. And it, <laughs> and in the most comically unnatural ways too. Like there's a bunch of meaningless fainting scenes in every single one of them basically. A, a laptop is getting the thrashing, man. <laughs> Another pointless element of this movie is this couple right here. I actually don't even know their names because honestly, they're not that important. All they really do throughout the entire movie is just argue. We don't have sex anymore. I'm very busy. My back is killing me. And I'm not really understanding what their tumultuous relationship has to do with hacking into the government or what anything at this point has to do with hacking into the government, but okay. Another thing this movie is really big on is having arguments while seated. I don't know what that's all about, but I find it very hilarious. I think the next time I'm in an argument, I'm gonna make sure that the entire time I'm completely lounged out. That just sounds like some boss bish behavior. Speaking of being overly relaxed, Dylan was prescribed painkillers for his pain from his accident, right? Kind of out of the blue, he proclaims that he doesn't need these anymore. Where are my pills? Thank you. I don't need these. Which is strange because it wasn't like he had like a drug problem. He just- Anyway, he very theatrically denounces them by throwing them in the toilet. Uh, not flushing them though, which seems weird to me because like, I don't know about you, but my knee-jerk reaction is to flush at any point. So that tells me you nasty. You just throwing stuff in the toilet and you don't flush. It does, it's not your first inclination to flush. I saw that. Gross. Another thing I'm not quite understanding is that Dylan has a drug problem. I don't know if this is pre-existing. I would hope so. Well, not that I would hope she had a pre-existing drug habit, but because she kind of went from zero to picking pills out of a toilet that low-key probably still has doodle -doo molecules in it. Oh, I'm an overachiever. 
So Dylan passes out again in a room full of laptops, so you know what that means. Um. Uh. My thing is, why does he have four laptops in a two square foot area? Like, if you hate your laptops so much that every time you see them, you must destroy them in some way or another. How do you have so many? <laughs> why is there four of them? Now, remember when I said this is a hacking movie? Okay, we don't find out that until like 30 minutes in. And we also find out incredibly abruptly. Like there was nothing that led into this at all. And we find this out because Dylan is talking to himself like a Disney villain. I'm going to continue hacking into these government systems to see what I can find out about all this national and international corruption I know is going on. The next few scenes are a lot. So there's <laughs> there's another hello relaxed argument scene. Let's talk. I'm done talking. Really? <laughs> what? There goes the laptop. I mean, around this point I'm just like, what the hell am I for? I don't even understand like what's going what is life life is but a vapor <laughs> No, 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 you did not do all of that You did not rip shirts off and throw stuff off of desks and destroy those laptops for the eight billionth time Just a bobo. I'm mad I'm mad, I'm furious. My dude hits you with a build up just a popo. That's the kiss you give to your grandma. Maybe a little bit more passionate. You might have something to worry about if that's how you're kissing grandma, but that's not my point. Y'all can't give me tongue after all of that aggression. Who rips shirts off just to be like, love you. So Dylan and his wife end up having a barbecue where they end up inviting uh, the doctor at the hospital. The doctor at the hospital. The doctor at the hospital. That's just some weird word choice. But two, do you invite your OBGYN over to a barbecue? Actually, Leah, the little girl from the beginning of the film. Look at that. Long lost fate realigning people and whatnot yes he passes out because lee is carrying a full-size notebook in her front pocket <laughs> that apparently she just carries with her wherever she goes it serendipitously opens to the page that she wrote it's a magical day in now there's a pattern i kind of noticed about movies like this particularly ones that have the writer as the star of the film as well have either a lot of sex with one particular female character um, or at least attempt to or have a supporting female character that's like really really pretty especially in comparison to the uh, less than conventionally attractive male protagonist now here's the thing dylan and this girl are supposed to be the same age right they were both children at the same time either uh he just didn't want to cast someone who would actually be age appropriate in this context or i don't know maybe he just wanted it to be like she aged really really well she aged like fine wine and he aged like room temp dairy but anyway they rekindled their relationship super super inconspicuously like nobody would have ever seen that i love how neil breen for some reason has this super huge moral high ground about every other character in these movies but for some reason he just didn't feel the need to make it a bad thing that he was cheating on his wife Wife with this woman the next example of that thing i was talking about where i feel like he just wants every woman on set to be in love with him that kind of gets solidified with this random subplot that just got introduced out of nowhere the couple that argues all the time their daughter uh is into is into dylan like hardcore like she's trying to seduce him the gist of that arc is dylan's like no stop it you're gonna stop now okay you can't do this. Please, don't do it anymore. Like, what was this even here for? It's that I can't help but feel kind of gross about it in the sense that it's like, is this kind of your tip of the hat to yourself? I don't know, it just kind of has this vibe of, if I wanted to, I could. But luckily, I'm a good guy. I'm cyborg alien Jesus, I would never do that. Pointless couple is arguing again over nothing. But uh, this time, it gets good. It gets really good. <laughs> because this time it ends in murder. I'm gonna shoot this damn car off full of holes. No, no, no. He killed himself. When 
I tell y'all, I almost peed myself. I <laughs> How did she shoot him face front? But he had a splatter on the side of his face and a bullet hole coming out the back of his neck. Y'all did not take physics. But more importantly, we have the best line of this movie of, of life, honestly. This is up there definitely with, I'm gonna dip my balls in some Thousand Island dressing. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. I started hyperventilating. Like I was, I was breathing into myself. I needed to find a safe place place almost took me out of the game of life. I can't believe you committed suicide. He said it like he, <laughs> he said it like he was only mildly disappointed. I can't believe you committed suicide. Why he say it like he got a fender bender? <laughs> and then after that he like, how could Jim have killed himself? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's just not like him. Because usually when he commits suicide. <laughs> okay, so Dylan and Leah start seeing each other again. And they essentially start an affair. But it doesn't last very long. Not because the affair doesn't last long. But because, uh... <laughs> I was about to say, oh so conveniently. Wow, that's dark. Uh, because... <laughs> because Dylan's wife ends up killing herself. Emily! Then the next iconic scene pops up. And oh my god. make a film like this like like <laughs> oh, i'm about to start hyperventilating yo how do you <laughs> how do you direct your actors on set to be like so what i'm <laughs> so, what I'm, so what I'm gonna do all seriousness so what i'm gonna do so what i'm gonna do is put this plate not even a salad, it's just baby spinach on a plate. On this rack of flimsy papers, it's gonna fall. We're gonna laugh. Dylan tells Leah about his top secret plans to hack into the government. By the way, we never figure out how he does this because A, those computers haven't been on the entire freaking movie and B, even if they were, uh, how are they functional? Thrown them, thrown books at them, dropped them, spilled coffee on them. How are any of them hacking into anything? I don't know if this is because Leah knows about his top secret, not so top secret secret about him hacking into the government. For whatever reason, she suddenly gets kidnapped. I don't know if this is from, I don't know why she gets, why am I trying to make sense of this? I'm just <laughs> But she gets kidnapped by a very, very incompetent kidnapper. I'm more mad at her. I'm gonna go on record. I'm gonna victim blame because anybody this bad at kidnapping and he still got you, like <laughs> you deserve it. I'm sorry. What what the hell is this? <laughs> like is a chloroform supposed to knock you out immediately? Like why was she conscious for so long? Low key, my guy just used peroxide. <laughs> he thought he was doing something, but all he doing is fighting gum disease. Also, due to the kidnapper being wildly incompetent, he dropped a piece of paper that says where he's taking her. That Dylan finds on the floor, wakes the kidnapper up just to hit him with a bottle to knock him out again. <laughs> and then suddenly, like an hour, maybe like an hour and 20 minutes into this movie, suddenly Dylan has freaking superhuman powers because he was able to get up to this door and he just, he's just able to walk through the door. <laughs> We never get this explained. We never find out where this power actually comes from. We never find out why this stone, if that's the thing that gave him the power, where it got its mystical powers from. We don't know nothing, but he walks through the door in arguably the most epic scene ever made in one of these crappy movies. Dylan goes to the White House after suddenly just couldn't take it anymore. He's like, I must go to the White House and tell everybody that I've been hacking into the government. Good God, where did this come from? Where did any of this come from? <laughs> Holds a press conference while in his like bowling shirt and he just blatantly says, I've hacked into the government and this is what I found. I have discovered more information than any hacker ever has. What I have found will shock you. And for some reason, no one shot him. <laughs> Like immediately, once you see some crazy dude going in front of the White House saying, I 
hacked into the White House. All right, come along. Get, get, get his ass down. All right. But in very like Birdemic-esque manners, you have to have this really strange and misplaced social commentary. But alas, each and every one of the CEOs and government entities and what is it? The, the president, president of, of the, the bank. bank. <laughs> the doctor at the hospital, the president of the bank. Super honestly are like, yup. Money, payoffs, and greed were always the priority. I am corrupt. I only want money. I don't care about y'all. And then they each kill themselves. <laughs> that last 10 minutes was a whirlwind. <laughs> and then Neil Green is over here like, yes, great. <laughs> oh, I need to be careful. Hold on, where's my Q-tip? But yes, Neil Breen is not arrested or shot at any point for doing a federal crime and instead lives the rest of his days happily ever after with his new chick. Uh, and they finish off by frolicking in, in the woods. Cyclical. Don't you just love the pure narcissism that is Neil Breen? His very presence at the White House was enough to end all forms of systematic corruption and, and, and bribery and misuse of power. Just one Neil Breen. Amen? Amen. Oh God. Unlike Tommy Wiseau and James Gwynn, is it right this time? Neil Breen made several movies and none of them are necessarily all the same, even though I've heard that there's a lot of similarities between them all. So I'm actually excited to uh, go down that rabbit hole of foolishness you know, at a later date. But that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, be sure to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you haven't checked it out yet, there's a whole Bad Movies in a Beat playlist that you can check out that'll be linked up above. And if you have any bad movie suggestions for me, always be sure to put them down in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.